Well, hello there, it's Morgan Harper Nichols here, and I realized that I hadn't made a video about this, and I figured, why not? Why not make a video about this? Just for anyone out there who wants to watch it, wants to listen, wants to hear my story. So I was diagnosed with autism in 2021, the year that I'm recording this at 31 years old. And this was a few months ago, and it was something that drastically changed my life. Now, I don't think I am cool enough that if someone's gonna make a movie of my life, but if somebody did, the moment that I received that diagnosis was like the big movie moment, like where suddenly everything's in slow motion and sun's pouring in and the character is just like, okay, I've figured out so much. It was a pretty big life-defining moment for me that I, in many ways, still trying to make sense of. So a little bit of the backstory, since I was young, I have always felt like something was sort of going on with me, but I didn't really know what. And also my parents had tried to get more information because they thought it could be a possibility that I was on the spectrum, but just being in the 90s, being a female, being a black female, it's just very hard to get information, <laughs> research or advice or any of that. And I ultimately just ended up as a kid learning how to just teach myself to try to function in the world in the best way that I could. And when I look back, I'm very proud of myself. I feel like I really have made it very far. Even though I was struggling, I really did give my all. And at the same time, as I was getting older, I just felt like I was really struggling with a lot of quote unquote basic things, such as just communication issues, some sensory issues. I would find that I would get really stressed out or really overwhelmed or just exhausted just by trying to keep up with the flow of conversation, trying to figure out social dynamics. And it just seemed to get more and more complicated like the older I got. And I remember in my early 20s, my, well, kind of like my late teens, early 20s, I remember thinking, you know, this is something I'm probably just gonna grow out of. It's like, I'm becoming an adult. This is just me coming of age. Like, yes, I feel awkward. But as I moved into my late 20s, I started to feel like that awkwardness that, that I felt, like that coming of age moment. I was like, I feel like that season's like not ending. I feel like other people kind of know things about social cues and communication and, and how to like make friends and network and just handle simple things like calling car insurance, everything just felt like such a challenge. I was like, why does everything feel so hard? And I remember just kind of getting to a breaking point with that when I was 27. And I was like, you know, there was that thing about autism uh, years ago when I was a kid. I wonder if that's a thing. Like, I wonder if it's possible that I could be on the spectrum. So at the time, I decided that I was going to ask my doctor at the time for some advice or, you know, a referral or just start the conversation at least with my doctor. So I went to the doctor and before I could even fully get my sentence out of just saying, hey, I think there could be a possibility that I'm on the spectrum. My parents thought it could be possible when I was a kid. And before I could even say anything, he just didn't even look at me. He has this clipboard in his hand. He's like, you have nothing to worry about. You're perfectly normal. Just like that. That was the end of the conversation. And sadly, I took his word and I was just like, okay, well, I guess there is nothing going on here and I've got to be the one to figure it out. Maybe I just need to grow up. Maybe I just need to take more apps or stop freaking out. So I spent the next three years living that way. And it was very challenging because I was in a huge career transition where I had been on the road as a musician and doing some background vocal work. And I was traveling and doing all of that. And I wasn't doing that anymore. And I was just sort of trying to like piece my career together as a freelancer. I had started doing digital artwork and stuff like that. And it all just felt like a lot all the time. There were obviously huge parts of it that I enjoyed. But at the same same time, I just felt like even when I was happy and enjoying where I was and I was enjoying things in my life, I felt like there was just this layer of life just feels like a lot to keep up with. I just feel like I'm struggling keeping up with, again, just needing to make phone calls to like car insurance or health insurance, like all these basic things. They just feel like so much and it doesn't seem to get easier or more manageable with time, like making friends, maintaining relationships, like all of this doesn't seem to be getting easier at any point. Like I don't feel like I'm getting into a rhythm. And I would just go back and forth with, is this something that I'm missing or is it something that I'm not quite understanding? And yeah, I didn't really know what to do with it other than to just maybe try to find therapy, which I did. I started going to therapy and 
that definitely helped. But still, it just was kind of in the back of my mind of like, I think there's something going on, but I'm not sure what. So that led me to the year 2020 when I'm sitting at home like everybody else was. And I ended up on TikTok. And for whatever reason, the TikTok algorithm decided to show me a series of videos that were either like women talking about their experience with getting diagnosed as autistic as adults. And that was just totally eye-opening for me. I don't think that's something that I ever really spent much time looking up or researching. So it just kind of found me. And as I watched these videos, I was just so shocked that I felt so seen in them. I felt like they were describing my experiences. And that is actually what, you know, gave me the courage to pursue and Google again and try to find somebody that could possibly help me. And thankfully, after two tries, I was able to find someone in my area that saw adults who were autistic and, you know, people who wanted to see if they were autistic as adults. So I started those appointments in the fall of 2020 and I got my diagnosis in early 2021. And that was a very eye-opening experience. I just learned a lot of, of, about myself. I learned that I had been pushing myself really, really hard in my life to try and keep up with the pace of everybody else because I felt like that was what I was supposed to do. It's like, oh, you're supposed to have all these friends and have all these people around and you're supposed to be able to communicate in this way. And if you're an artist, you're supposed to be able to show your face and do videos and all these things. And I'm not saying what I'm describing is not at all describing all autistic people's experience. Autism looks different person to person. And I'm certainly not a medical professional, so I'm not able to speak in depth about what other people experience. And what I'm talking about, even in this video, isn't necessarily like a list of like the top things that I've dealt with, you know, or that all people deal with who are autistic. So yeah, it's definitely something that I was slowly starting to make sense of. Like during that process of getting diagnosed, it was a huge opportunity to finally take a close look in the mirror and see how I had been really pushing myself to do a lot more than I was actually capable of doing. And I could go on and on with so many different examples as to what that looked like for me throughout my life. I have some of them I'm still now, like even months after my diagnosis, I'm still thinking of stuff from my, my childhood and my youth where I'm like, oh my gosh, I was just really pushing myself. I really felt like I had to show up that way and be this kind of person because I thought that's what how everyone acts and I know that may sound vague but I really am still learning how to find language for a lot of my experiences and another area that has been really special for me to just learn more about myself and just something that I share with a lot of autistic people and that is the concept and the idea of special interests and special interests they're different than hobbies and it's more of like something I'm interested in that helps me function and understand the world around me. And for the longest time, I would have things that I would become interested in that I either might get made fun of, of by other kids or people would just look at that and say, oh, that's kind of weird. And then I would just sort of become really private about things I was interested about and I wouldn't want to share them. So one example of that is when I was around, I want to say 12 years old, maybe I really got into Lord of the Rings and I didn't really feel feel like that was something that other kids I was around were interested in. So it's something I was very, very quiet about. Like if I were reading one of the books and, you know, I went to church or something, like I would always make sure to hide the book because I'm like, these aren't cool books. Like kids might make fun of me for reading this kind of thing. And there were times where I would kind of try to loop people into some of the things I was interested in, but I never was really able to find other kids, other people to connect with. So kind of learning about this term, special interest and how that kind of, you know, impacts the lives of autistic people. It has just taught me that there's so much beauty and diversity to what people enjoy, what people like, what people use to function in the world. And I personally just want to live in a world where there's a lot less shame around that, where there's less shame around people needing to do certain things or communicate or use a certain language to be in the world. So that's something that I'm still learning about. And it's something that, you know, if I 
could tell the younger me anything, I would tell her like, keep liking all the stuff that you think is weird or that you think other people aren't gonna care about. It's okay, you are who you are and the things that you're interested in, there's beauty to that and you don't have to feel shame for those things. So that's a huge part of what I've been learning and, and how things have been since receiving my diagnosis. And another thing that just has to do with functioning is I've just realized that communicating via technological devices, whether that's email, texting, that is not necessarily my strength. Now, I do have a whole component of my art practice where I invite people to send me messages and I respond with art and I enjoy being able to do that. However, outside of that sort of artistic lens, it actually is very hard for me to kind of maintain email chains and texting conversations. I just don't know where, where to go with them a lot of times. I don't understand a lot of tone. I don't understand a lot of the, the different social nuances, even the use of certain emojis. I sometimes use the wrong emojis and it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot to think about, a lot to process. It's not impossible. I, I could do it and I can do it, but it's a lot. It takes a lot for me to be able to function in that capacity. So I now have help with my emails and my messages and everything because I'm just not able to handle them on my own. And even like with some work related things, I've drastically reduced how much I use certain chat features and stuff like that because it is just not practical for me. It takes so much energy, so much emotional effort to do these things. So yeah, this has just been a really good time in my life in that regard because it's really been a time of becoming really honest with myself about where I'm at, what I'm capable of, what I'm not capable of, what I can do, what I can't do, what I feel like I should be able to do, but I'm gonna learn how to stop shaming myself for feeling like I should be able to do it. And yeah, that's just been a little bit of my journey and I'm learning how to talk about it more. I'm learning a lot from other autistic people. I think that one of the best things that you could do if you're just sitting at your computer is go and follow more and subscribe to more autistic autistic voices and I'll definitely put some people that I follow in the comments so that you can check them out but I would even say that even since I received my diagnosis I've been seeing more pages pop up I've been seeing more people starting to share more and I think that that is the gift of the internet is that it does provide the opportunity to learn firsthand from people who are actually autistic and you can actually listen to what they have to say and read their frequently asked questions and that can help you learn a lot and even support other autistic people in your life or if this is something that you're in a place of like I think I want to get checked out there are other people who have very generously shared their experiences in addition to mine and my hope is that you know the more of us who are able to share we can kind of piece something together so that people can get help by listening to other people who actually have been through what they're going through so I am so grateful for you watching this and thank you for joining me today I'm Morgan Harper Nichols and this is just a little bit of my story.